Okay, we're back here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. This is where all the action is happening. This is the Cube, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the advanced, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Scott Weller is here. He's the Vice President and General Manager of HP's Technology Services Support Group. And I have, I have a little news for you, Scott. Uh, we're in Vegas. Lucky seven, this is your seventh time is it on really? the queue. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think you're giving Pat Gelsinger a run for his money. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Donatelli's so, showing up too, he's like yeah, clockwork yeah. too. Now yeah. we got you know, right. George Kadifa hooked on the queue. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't good. counted it so high, but, but Well, I, one of our guys just uh, yeah. passed me the moment, Matt, Mark Hopkins said, hey, just guess what, yeah. seven times. Yeah. So. Um, we, had awesome. one of, we had one of our senior executives, <clears throat> one of your senior executives at theCUBE say to us, I love theCUBE, not only is it fun and it's good yeah. content, but I have to meet all the other executives here <laughs> Absolutely. at HP. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a watering hole. Well, we're like, all traveling around so much, <laughs> it's, uh, but you're right. It's great. So how are you? Doing well, and uh, another exciting week out here in Las Vegas. Uh, it just seems to get bigger every year, a lot more energy. So yeah, this is a great, great venue. So what's being what's being discussed here, obviously, with customers <coughs> are all here, getting yeah. all your customers and your partners in one spot. It's a good spot. Right. Are you guys announcing anything specific? Are you uh, just having, and what kind of conversations are you having with your customers? Yeah, so it's, uh, um, we always make announcements in this forum, and you know, this, this Discover, unlike the others uh, through the year, is a very technical one. So if you look around, there's lots of, uh, technical displays, a lot of technical people from HP are here, and uh, our customers bring their technical folks in to, to have those deep discussions. So, you know, I, I think what you see from us overall is a, is a response to a reality in the market, which says that, you know, uh, you know, just two years ago, customers would say to us, yeah, you know, I get cloud, some would say it's just not for me, right? But now, um, uh, cost pressures being what they are, governments, banks, you know, er literally everybody is either uh, contemplating moving workloads onto uh, cloud, both private and public, or they're already down that path. And so what you saw from us in technology services was a very holistic response to that with a life cycle uh, set of services, everything from advisory to design, and then the operate as well. So uh, in my group, we announced Converge Cloud Support, which is all about you know what, what is the uh, experience that you get, how do you get confidence to move workloads uh, out into the uh, public cloud in an orchestrated fashion and have have a known response to that, a, new, uh, a known service level. So lastly, we talked to Sargi a lot, talked about the, his objective, and right. you know, we always ask, what's your key metric? He had <coughs> one of his key metrics is, obviously, get all HP customers onto the cloud. Right. That's obviously right. a key goal yeah. for him. Yeah. And that's a, that's a path, that's a journey. You know, right. I'm not a big fan of the journey where it's a little bit overused right now, but sure. I call it path, because you have to paving a road, and, Right. And I think a lot of the life cycle discussions are interesting because it's not just a one trick pony kind of right. tool. It's, it's an ongoing series of education, reference mm -hmm. architectures, right. uh, technologies. So as you look at Tom Choice, he's got a whole division now dedicated to basically packaging converged yep. infrastructure That's right. for the cloud. That's right. So if he's doing it, your customers are doing it. So yes. so what have you learned since our last Cube gig that you shared with the audience around some of those dynamics? We've seen certainly on OpenStack, Morantis has got great traction with just, here's OpenStack in a box yeah. Um, yeah. for POCs or whatever. Yeah. So what have, yeah. what have, what's changed in your world? So I, I'd say two things. One is that you know we've recognized that customers are at every place on that journey or path, and we need to meet them where they are, and uh, and that's why you see our, uh, our response and the kind of services that we uh, announced this week, and then on OpenStack, you know, we're all in. I mean, this is a, this is a big deal for the industry. It's a big deal for us. It's the basis of uh, our HP Cloud OS. And what we're basically saying is, look, this thing is built on open standards. There's there's no lock in here. If you built uh, to uh, HP's Cloud OS, you've got workload portability. That is that is the holy grail, frankly, to make all of this stuff a reality for customers and drive all the benefits. So I got to ask you about the OPEX question. I mean, obviously one of the things that's attractive about cloud is the economics. Right, uh, right. You know, CapEx versus OPEX, and that's kind of, yeah. everyone knows that trick. Um, it's, you know, leasing and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, but now with bringing cloud on premise, private cloud, right. um, I've heard some conversations here about making that OPEX, yes. and that there's actually services. <clears throat> um, what have you heard, what's going on in that area? That's, a, that's what we hear from customers. Dave and I were hearing yeah. that from some customers. Yeah. Is that an option? It is indeed, so uh, uh, we have a service, a four walls uh, data center focused service called Data Center Care, and one of the options our customers have within that is to uh, to essentially procure using an OPEX model, right? And the service itself is called flexi flex it's Flexible Capacity Service as part of Data Center Care. 
And what that does is uh, it's a, it's a, com a completely bundled uh, services plus gear plus an embedded lease arrangement that uh, starts with a threshold. And, uh, and it's really geared to customers who know they're going to grow going forward. And frankly, that's almost every customer. So yeah, there's a lot of excitement around this. And uh, right now we're in talks with some, some very large companies who, who basically want to shift entirely to that model so they can better match their cash flows. Scott, you said a couple years ago, so sort of the <coughs> theme was, or the discussion was, ah, cloud, it's not for me. And, yep. and that really has changed dramatically because I think a couple years ago it was like, well, somebody down the hall in the business line said, well, it's for me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go do it. Yeah, agreed. so, uh, so, uh, presumably you're seeing that shift. Uh, you know, where are we? I mean, is it still really mixed? Are there some guys still resisting, um, or is it? Do you feel like IT is under such pressure? The CIO actually wants to be that cloud broker. The yeah. people in the organization want to want to get those skills. That it's just a, <clears throat> a, a, a a momentum. Is it is it going to be more like distributed computing, or was a big fight for a decade, or is the, yeah. is IT going to embrace this? You know, I. Uh, I think that at the at the basis of all this is management of change. Frankly, mm. um, a lot of customers I talk to are saying, you know, we, we understand the technology implications. We we really know how to do this. We we've got vendors who are willing to help us, like HP. Um, but you know, when when you talk about traditional IT, you're not just talking about technology. You're talking about the silos, the islands, the hierarchies, the organizational you know, uh, fiefdoms that, that kind of grew up around this in some of our customers. And uh, and frankly, you know, you've got to shift away from that to this notion that you can go all in on pooled resources that uh, no one group controls. That doesn't mean, you know, one of the questions that I get a lot asked a lot is, you know, what does this mean to the IT profession? And what kind of roles will there be in yeah, the future versus, question. you know, and- Which and I what, asked it. <laughs> and my, what I say is, look, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, storage specialists go away. But you know, you're going to have more focus on uh, service management. You're going to have more focus on being a broker and, and, and dealing with your ecosystem of partners to enable that. So it's really, it's really a, a huge management of change challenge. And I think that that's really the, the biggest uh, sort of uh, inhibitor right now. It's not the technology, it's not the architectures and, and that sort okay, of Okay, but so you, you're, you say the storage specialists won't go away, go away and I agree, it's not yeah, going to happen yeah. overnight, but if you're advising your kid, you're not going to say, hey, you should become a <clears throat> network admin. You know, sure. You wouldn't, right? You'd talk sure. about, hey, you should get involved in, in data. Or, you know, right. might, might get involved in some kind of service provision yeah. or something like yeah. that. I mean, that's the kind of skill set that, that I think I, I think people are embracing within IT. I yeah. think, you know, a couple years ago, maybe even four or five years ago, they were holding on. Well, what do you mean we're going to we're going to cut cost or we're going to reduce sure. labor. You know, they yeah. didn't want to have that conversation. Your salespeople didn't want to have that conversation sure. because they yeah. got friction from the buyers. And I think that mindset has changed. People are yeah. seeing, hey, there's real opportunities to create value, add job satisfaction, make more money. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kadifa was talking about um, the modern business, the, the new <coughs> business, and that's one of growth, mm -hmm. right? So people yeah. are in growth mode. Mm -hmm. And I think, my, you know, we've always talked about something on theCUBE, this is why I love theCUBE, is that people really need a path. They need, they need the playbook. Right. And the playbook, it's that simple. Yeah. I got to go from point A to point B. <clears throat> point A was the old way, mm -hmm. rack and stack, loading Linux boxes. Yeah. People yeah. don't want to load Linux boxes anymore. They don't want to install boxes and load Linux. Right. And a new software patch, they want to yeah. sassify, they want to run it over the network, they want sure. dynamic provisioning, yeah. they want dynamic policies, right? sure. they want a fabric, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty obvious. But then you think about the realities of pulling that off. I mean, yeah. just, kind of get your arms around that. It's just like, okay, where do you start? I mean, a lot of people, who do you dial? Who do you call first? Right. Who's your first phone call? Right. Well, that's what we're all about now. You know, the, I, I completely agree with you. That the, the, the complexity is all still there, uh, but there's a lot less interest in focusing on that. There's more interest in focusing on, okay, what can I do to drive a lot of agility into the business? Who am I going to uh, call to, to sort of manage out some of this complexity for me? And you know, there's still there's still a huge desire for kind of best of breed in the stack. So you've got to be able to deal with that, and at the same time take the complexity away from the customer. And we've talked about that. It's interesting, you know. One of the things that's highlighting for me that's discovered. It's been obvious. I mean, Dave has been talking about it a lot more than I have, but um, following it. But this show at HP Discover, security is just. It's just Absolutely. huge. If it was yeah. a tag cloud of like concepts that are <clears throat> taking front and center, it wouldn't be big data. It would be security in terms of relevant, most influential yeah. conversations. Yeah. Cloud, then yes. big data. Yes. 
So cloud is obviously on everyone's agenda. So you know, here you can do security, do the cloud. So it's, okay, move from A to B. While you're going to move there, just fix security. Yeah. You seeing that same thing with the, the, the are there far along in the conversations? What's yeah. your feedback from the field? So, you know, security's always been important, right? It's not like the industry woke up last week and said, wow, we want to care about this. I think what's, what's happened, though, is when you get serious about hybrid, when you get serious about having distributed workloads that might be orchestrated and enabling, you know, through a federated fashion, enabling business processes, what happens is you can, you can bring in new vulner vulnerabilities as a result of having that kind of architecture. So I think that's, that's what's changed. Is, is hybrid means you got to think about security even differently. You've got to think about networking differently. And again, these are the kinds of services you saw us bring out this week to address those very problems. Yeah. My final question is, because uh, we got to get our wrap up for the day here, is um, what, what, what's on your to-do list now, between now and the end of the show, from a customer standpoint? Sure. Because you have an opportunity right now to talk to a lot, a lot of the big customers. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what's your objective here at the show in terms of conversation type uh, conversation agenda, right. and then just in general, the next uh, you know, six months to a year, you're going to be at the Barcelona, yes. uh, all the shows, what's, what's on the plan? So obviously, uh, um, cloud is, is a huge trend and topic, and I guess what I would say to, uh, to customers out there is that, look, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're a known entity when it comes to the kind of support experiences that you get from HP, and uh, we're, what we want to say is that we're here for you in the same way same phone number to call if you're actually moving workloads out now, right? We're, we're, we're going to give you a defined experience, so let us help you do that. And the other thing is, you know, the in the industry, in the support industry, there's a huge, a massive shift away from remediation, which is the old style break fix, to uh, prevention, proactive services. And then the next leap, thinking forward to answer your future question, is it's about preemption. So we are now able to look at a lot of data centers, a lot of different data centers that different customers have, and without disclosing any proprietary information at all, we're able to sense when there are brewing issues. And we're using autonomy software and other kinds of big data analytics to do that. So customers, you know, the, the whole prevention thing is, I don't want to wait for it to break. Preemption's about, we, we ought to be able to sense things and come in and prevent the, the very first issue, and that's what we're working on. Yeah, and that's, and that's the dynamic world of of preventive, you know, using predictive analytics, yeah. and taking the manual labor or the manual piece out of it somewhat, but you yeah. can't take the manual piece out right. completely. You yeah. still need domain experts, right? So right. we'll always have service yeah. engineers. Eventually, you know, something might break. We, we're not going to go out of that business. But the idea is how we can prevent that and, uh, and even preempt it. You know, Dave and I always talk about services angle, um, a section we have, and it doesn't get the fanfare of like the you know the Google stories and the Apple yeah. stories. But right now, we're just seeing so much demand for services, yeah. web services, cloud services, actual <laughs> consulting services. Yeah, help me. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> yes. are in. You know, yeah. I need shovels and picks, yeah. and I need people, I yeah. need the designs, I need some blueprints. Yeah. So the build-outs are happening, and it's really exciting. And you know, it looks like an area that you don't want to pay attention to, but literally channels are being recasted, so Absolutely. channel providers are changing <clears throat> what they deliver, how they deliver it, that's going to change the economics. So yeah. a lot of cool things happening in the services Absolutely. world. Uh, well, Scott, thanks for coming on. We're going to continue to always cover your, your area. Obviously, Great. we're watching that Services Angle. This is Silicon Angle. Go to servicesangle.com. Soon that's going to fold into siliconangle.com slash servicesangle. Uh, we cover that, and, and you know what? It's important because you know what? A lot of profit has been made in services. Yeah. Resellers make a ton of dough on services. And a lot of value yeah. created. A lot of value. Yeah. So value, yeah. where there's value, there's money. So uh, we're going to be watching this. So this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with day two wrap-up after this short break.